My name is Yvonne Jacoby. I'm the COO for the Aon Center for Innovation and Analytics, a long title neatly summarized to the ACIA. So what is the ACIA? In essence, it's a small but powerful group of about 240 individuals within the expanse of the Aon Global Organization, which has about 55,000 colleagues in it. We provide insightful analytics to these colleagues, but also to other stakeholders, clients, and insurance firms. With three locations across the world, I, with our leadership team here in Dublin, oversee the operations of our Irish and Polish operations. We also have a close working relationship with our sister centre in Singapore. Now, before I go into more detail about what we do, I thought I'd take a minute or two to introduce you to me. Um, in essence, I'm a professional. I'm a wife. I'm a mother. I'm a wannabe tennis player. Um, I'm a person who loves order, but who knows by 9.15 on Monday, her week is nothing going to be the perfectly scheduled nirvana she dreamed of. In short, my career has taken me from corporate finance in London and Dublin, to strategic and business planning in Auckland, New Zealand, and then most latterly back to Dublin, where soon after its establishment, I joined the ACIA. My roles have been varied across project management, um, leading the data team, and then most latterly in the last 18 months, a COO. So what is a COO? Well, for me, there are a multiple of descriptors. There's the mentor, there's the change agent, there's the partner. Me personally, I, I see myself as the glue, keeping lots of different pieces together. I work with a key focus on our CEO and our uh, senior leadership team in, in business planning, um, our strategic direction, and ultimately transforming this with our teams across our organization in Dublin and Krakow to operationally um, inform and, and enable these, uh, these strategic plans. For me personally, well, on reflection, it's not just work. Um, I found my time in ACIA has been about uh, starting, a build, uh, starting to build a, a startup in a global corporate, um, developing and motivating a team, defining ourselves as, as data and analytics pioneers in a firm that hadn't had that in, in its past. And with it, we faced the trials and the tribulations, the positives, the neg negatives, the, the ups and the downs. But most of all, what I absolutely love about my role, about our organization, and about the industry where it stands right now is the sheer opportunity. The opportunity to provide individuals and firms with insights to critical challenges and risks in their lives that they've never had before. And with them, support them in increasing levels of protection for their businesses. Let me paint you a picture. Imagine two people, they're talking to each other. There's a piece of paper and on that piece of paper is information with regard to a risk for one of those people. The information on that piece of paper contains information on the policy that is covering that risk in the last 12 months. And it's also giving insight to the policy and the risk profile for the coming 12 months. That piece of paper has critical information on it. It is information that has been gleaned from that broker over many years of expertise and interaction with insurance professionals. However, it is missing some critical information and it is limited in its information on the breadth of the market that is available to that broker. And it's that limit that we want at the ACIA to dismiss and to eliminate. We're working to extend the conversation between the broker and the underwriter to ensure they're not just talking about the past and the present, but ultimately the future and new emerging risks that the client hasn't considered before. In effect, we were established to introduce analytics into a relationship-dominated industry, one which has developed know-how and expertise over centuries. It took the presence of mind of our global CEO, a gentleman called Greg Case, to define a vision for our organization and actually for our industry with data and analytics at its heart. 
From Aon's perspective, while it's been a very brave, powerful step to invest a lot of money in the ACIA and embedding data and analytics in our corporate DNA, it's been more evolution, not revolution. Today, however, we're in a fundamentally different position to where we started a decade ago. In fact, in the last two months, our new uh, repositioned global strategy, Aon's North Star, has been released. And within it, it sees data and analytics on the second line of the document, straight after our corporate mission. Now, to say I was happy was an understatement, and to say many of my colleagues were happy when they saw that was an understatement. It just reinforced what Aon has been doing over the last number of years. Um, and it wasn't outlining that this was something new. In fact, it was just cementing what we already knew. Data and analytics is creeping more and more into the propositions that our brokers are offering to our clients. But it's taken time to get there. And as you can imagine, there's been many learnings and many challenges that we've experienced along the way, a total norm when it comes to change management. And that's really why I'm here today to speak with you, is to give you some insight to what we faced um, as an organization within a big corporate. And with that, maybe give you some learnings and some tips which could help your organizations and you individually. So here are the top three that we would see uh, that are at play. When you're central to a change program, you're often identified as the problem child, not the problem solver. In our particular case, we were seen as a disruptor of the norms, a disruptor of the way our organization has tr traditionally operated. In the last 20 or so years, Aon has acquired hundreds of other companies. And with it, it has assumed multiple technology platforms and data capture tools with numerous methods of data entry and myriads of form of correct data entry capture. Our job in the ACIA is to collate that information, to transform it, to standardize it into a consistent form which enables analytics of it. Through this process, though, as we were collating this information, we started to identify patterns of shortfall, of data quality challenges, of accuracy and completeness issues. Given the ACIA was producing the analytics of this, there were messages starting to stream through our network that the ACIA was producing the bad data. A fallacy given we weren't producing any data. Actually, our network were producing the data. We were producing the analytics of it. However, to ensure that our colleagues, who were many of them who were new to adopting and using analytics in their core proposition, we needed to ensure they were confident with the content. And so we started on a journey, which we hadn't anticipated, which involved um, enabling and managing data quality solutions. So our role now has become heavily involved in helping and moving that mandate forward. Not an easy task for a small group of people in a large organization, and certainly not an easy message to deliver to colleagues. You're not doing a great job, you need to do it better. The appetite to pivot, to, fo to focus on first time right data entry has been at the heart of our message, and it's one that has taken some time to sink in to our organization's culture. So how have we gone about it? Fundamental thing is we're driving collaboration with commitment. We're working with local country leaders to adopt and adapt data quality into their daily thinking. We're looking for management buy-in. And what we're really looking for is a message of what you put in to the data sets, you get out in the analytics. Supporting leaders with clear, measurable insights to what's going on in their data capture, what's good, what's bad, who's great, where are their challenges, and how can we help you move that forward is a fundamental to how we operate within the ACIA and across the broader Aon environment. The benefits from this work cannot be underestimated. The focus on data quality is key to delivering and enabling critical insights to support our colleagues in their conversations with their clients. At the core of achieving this has been commitment, a collaboration between the ACIA and our Aon network. In the end, we're all in it together. The next big thing we needed to reconsider was saying yes to everything, taking on too much. 
when AM's engagement model was developing and, and seeing how it could embed data and analytics, we wanted to get our name out there. We wanted to show and assert our expertise, show where we could add value, show the benefits of data and analytics. And with that, when people were coming to us initially asking for um, analytics support, we were of course saying, yes, absolutely. We couldn't say no to analytics requests. We didn't want to say no to analytics requests. We were on a drive to get our name into the Aon network, and we wanted to work with those who were enthusiastic and willing to adopt analytics into their service proposition. What we were ultimately looking to get in the very early stages of development were one or two key senior leaders who wanted to work with us, who could see the benefits that analytics could bring to their teams. While this made sense at the start, as time went by though, we saw that we were actually losing and forfeiting some very high value generating opportunities. We realized we really needed to rebalance our prioritization efforts between ACIA and the core Aon corporate. Our way to achieve this was focusing on prioritization, but prioritization defined by key value generation. Central to this change has been the requirement for commitment and accountability, both from ourselves in the ACIA and across the Aon network. It's meant turning relationships on its head. Where once ACIA was directed to do a job, we're now working with our key stakeholders, working actively through active ownership and collaboration at its core, and practically Budget and uh, resources are shared from both sides. With this has also come a responsibility to keep stakeholder expectations in check, working with them to clearly identify what's possible and critically when it comes to data and the world that we operate in, what is permissible with the data sets that we've been capturing. With this came the reality that our engagement has to end at some stage with them. We can't keep striving for the perfect answer, even though they want us to get better and better. We need to be constantly determining and ensuring that value is delivered um, and not diminished. So our journey, we've really realized that change doesn't happen overnight and not really realized it. I think it's a, it's a statement, it's, it's a known fact. Um, but we've, we've worked on it and uh, continue to work on it and ensuring that um, our stakeholders are smart and reasonable in their expectations. We also needed to work hard to unlearn wanting to please everybody, trying to be all things to all people. In the early days of the ACIA, we were an unknown quantity. As I mentioned earlier, we were, we were the disruptor of the norm with requirements for new function and expertise to drive our proposition forward. That in order to build and sustain what we were ultimately trying to deliver, we, required, we considered we needed to establish a whole technology team, solution architecture, database administration, application development, even a service desk. These functions existed in Aon on a global scale, but were not in a position to service our dynamic needs at that time. As a result, we created an end-to-end -end organization, a micro-organization within the expanse of the Aon network. We had to, we had to have the capacity to self-sustain. The challenge with it, though, was that as the years have passed, we haven't been 100% sure what we were there to deliver. We've had to soul search, to really look inwardly, to understand what is our unique selling proposition. Where can we drive the best value for our organization and ultimately for our clients? We can do it all, but should we be doing all? Where should we lead and where should we have other aspects of our organization drive and lead for us? A lot of questions posed through this process, and there has been a tremendous amount of senior leadership uh, soul searching as part, part of that process. In the end, we chose our own, own path, which really focused on redefining our operating model. This, as no doubt many of you have experienced through your times of change in your own organizations, takes time, it takes drive, it takes focus, it takes energy, and it takes perseverance. For us, this saw us revisit our core purpose to enable our clients, 
colleagues and carriers maximize their potential by creating valuable analytical solutions. And to do this, we needed to identify what were those key functions that were going to enable that solution. What would we move and push to our corporate and what would we retain ourselves? And we concluded the areas that we really wanted to focus on, where our capacity and capability was truly different in our organization, were in the areas of data management, analytics, data science, and platform development. But this was as much about finding out what we wouldn't do as well, and where our expertise didn't sit, and liaising and engaging with our corporate colleagues to really understand where they could stand up and support us. I've got to admit the transition to this state has been far from smooth. Um, there have been a multiple challenges along the way, and as I said, perseverance is at the core of this, and, and is at the core of any change uh, program. But ultimately, I know through our own um, perseverance um, and ultimately through our own will, we have the commitment both from our organization and internally with our own colleagues to succeed in this vein. In closing, I'd like to leave you with this. In the last fortnight, we had the pleasure of a visit from uh, our CEO of the APAC region. It's a large developing market for Aon and the insurance industry. In his conversation with our team, he noted that we're in a time and a place with our colleagues and within our industry, which is seeing broking and waking up to the reality that broking is not broking without data. He reaffirmed that while relationships are at the core of how we operate as an organization and an industry, data and analytics is the fundamental new ingredient. One can't live without the other. That's our industry's new reality, a reality we've known and have been working on for the last decade. Mm -hmm.